Hey everyone, welcome to part 95 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we'll start implementing a custom cutscene builder with which we can create cutscenes like this. So we'll start by building a custom inspector like this for our cutscene builder. So let's look at how to implement this. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So before I start the implementation of cutscenes, I'm going to update my project to the latest version of Unity. The reason is because in newer versions of Unity, lists are shown in a much better way in the inspector. So since our cutscenes are going to be a list of actions, it's better to switch to a new version of Unity. Okay. So you just have to go to installs and click on add and install the latest LTS version of Unity. So right now the latest LTS version is 2021.3.5. I have already installed it. So that's why it's grayed out. So you can go ahead and install your latest LTS version. And by the way, the reason why I recommend choosing an LTS version is because LTS versions will be the most stable versions with the least number of bugs. All right. So in my case, it's 2021.3.5. So I want to upgrade my project to that version. And by the way, guys, before you upgrade, be sure to make a backup of the project. A lot of things can go wrong when you upgrade the project. So it's really important to make a backup of the project before you try to upgrade it. Okay. So let's go ahead and upgrade this project. So to upgrade, all we have to do is change the version to the version you want and then simply open the project. Okay. So when you do this, Unity will ask us if we want to upgrade the project to the newer version of Unity. So if we click confirm, then it will start upgrading our project. Okay. So this will take some time. So I'll pause the video and get back to you once this is over. All right. So after waiting for a while, the update is finally complete. So let me go ahead and run the game and test if everything is working fine. All right. So everything is working fine. So the one thing I want to show you is that the list in the new version of Unity is much better. So here we can do things like reorder the elements in the list. All right. So that will be pretty useful for us when implementing cutscenes. So let's start the implementation of cutscenes. So first, let me create the scripts for it. So inside the scripts folder, I'll create a new folder called cutscenes okay and in here i'll create a new script called cutscene action okay let me open it up in visual studio so let me just get rid of the default code and this is going to be a plain class so it's not going to inherit from the mono behavior. So this class is going to be the base class for all our cutscene actions. Okay. All our cutscene actions are going to inherit from this class. So in this class, I'll just create a serialized field variable for the name of the cutscene. Okay. That's all we need in this class. So next, let's create two different cutscene actions. So first, 
I'll create a cutscene action for showing dialogues. So let me create a new C sharp script called dialogue action. Okay. And next, I'll create a cutscene action for moving characters. So let me create a script called move actor action. Okay. So these two actions will inherit from our base cutscene action. So first let me open up the dialogue action and let me get rid of the default code. Okay. So the dialogue action is going to inherit from our cutscene action class. So here let me change mono behavior to cutscene action. Okay. So this action will be responsible for showing dialogues in the cutscene. So in this class, we need an extra variable to store the dialogue that should be shown. So here, let me create a new serialized field variable for the dialogue to show. All right. So next, let me open up the move actor action. Okay. And this is also going to inherit from the cutscene action class. And this action will be responsible for moving the characters in the cutscene. So in this class, we need two extra variables. One for the character that we should move. So let me create an object for the character. All right. And then we'll also need a list of vectors. So this will be the movement patterns. So I'll just call this move patterns. All right. So you can see that each action needs different variables, right? So the challenge here is how can we show a list of action in the inspector so that each action will have different variables. So let's actually create a list and see how it's shown in the inspector. So first I'll create a new class called cutscene that will hold a list of actions. All right. So let me get rid of the default code. And in this class, we'll have a list of cutscene actions. Okay. I'll just call it actions. And if we want this class to be serialized and shown in the inspector, we have to add the system.serializable attribute at the top of it. So let me go ahead and add that. All right. And let me also add it on top of our dialogue action and the move actor action. Okay. So now it should be serialized and we should see the actions in the inspector. So let's go to humility and test. So first, let me open up the hometown scene and I'll add a cutscene over here. So first, let me create a game object and call it test cutscene. Okay. And I'll add the cutscene script into this game object. So now we can see the actions list in the inspector. But the problem is the elements of the list only shows the name, right? So it's only showing the variable inside the cutscene action class, which is our base class, but it's not showing any variables inside the subclasses, right? So the reason for that is because this is a list of cutscene action and even though it can store other actions that inherit from the cutscene action, we have no way of adding these actions to the list right now. Right. When we add an element by clicking the plus button, it'll just add the cutscene action itself. So we have no way of adding the move actor action or the dialogue action. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a custom editor for the cutscene and I'll create buttons for adding 
all the type of actions that we have okay so let's go ahead and create an editor script for the cutscene so inside the cutscene folder first I'll create a new folder called editor all right all our editor scripts should be in a folder called editor right and here I'll create a new script called cutscene editor okay let me get rid of the default code and since this is an editor script we have to make it inherit the editor class and to use the editor class we have to import the unity editor namespace so let me use control dot and import it all right and next we have to link this editor script to the cutscene script right so i'll use the custom editor attribute and the type i'll pass the cutscene okay so now this class will be the editor class of the cutscene script so next let's go ahead and override the on inspector gui function and let's make changes to the inspector of the script okay and by the way i'm not going to explain all this because we have already done this while creating the editor script for mapedia so i'm not going to explain this again all right so what all should we add in the cutscene editor so at the top of the script i want to add buttons for all the cutscene actions that we have okay so i'll be creating a button at the start of this function before calling the base dot on inspector gui and drawing the default gui all right so to create a button we can use gui layout dot button okay and i'll name the first button as add dialog action so this function will return true if this button is clicked okay so if the button is clicked we want to go ahead and add the dialog action right we have to add the dialog action to the actions list so in the cutscene script let's create a function for doing that so i'll create a public function called add action and this will take a cutscene action which we will add to the list all right so in this function we can add the action passed to our actions list all right so now we just have to call the add action function when the button is clicked so for that first we need a reference to the cutscene script so from an editor script we can get the object that is being inspected by using the target property okay so this will give us the object that is being inspected so in our case it will be a cutscene so we have to convert this into a cutscene because the target is of type object by default so let me convert it into a cutscene by using the as keyword all right and i'll show the result in a variable called cutscene okay so now when the button is pressed we can go ahead and add the dialog action by calling cutscene dot add action and for the action i'll just pass a new dialog action okay so next i'll create a button for adding the move actor action all right let me create a button called add move actor action and if this button is pressed then we can call cutscene dot add action and for the action we can pass a 
new move actor action okay so we can actually make this an elusive because only one button will be clicked at a time all right and by the way let me fix the spelling of the dialogue so now we should be able to add different actions to our cutscene actions list but to be able to serialize these actions properly we have to add serialize reference attribute for this list so what this will do is this will serialize the field as a reference instead of serializing it as a value okay so if it's serialized as a value then only the variables inside the cutscene action class will be serialized but if we serialize it as a reference then based on the type it will serialize the variables in the subclasses okay so let's go to unity and try this okay so let me get rid of all the elements in the list right now and now if i click on the add dialog action button it should add a dialog action and you can see that inside the element we have the dialog which is the variable that we specified in the dialog action okay and next if i add the move actor action then you can see that it has the fields for the character and the move patterns okay so using this we can have different variables inside different elements of the list based on our requirement okay so next the one thing i want to improve is right now the names are shown as element 0 element 1 element 2 etc right so this will get hard to manage when we have lots of actions so if we give a name over here like dialogue action then that will be used as the elements name over here right but manually entering these names will be tiresome for the designer when there are lots of actions so we can actually set this name automatically while we add the action to our list okay so we can set action dot name from here but name is a private variable and we don't have access to it so let me go ahead and create a property so that we can get and set the name all right so i'll create both a setter and a getter all right so now from here we can set the name so we want to set the name based on the type of the action right if it's a move act action then we want to set move act action as the name and if it's a dialogue action then we want to set that as the name so we can easily get the type of the action by calling action dot get type and this returns a type variable so we want to convert it to string so i'll just call to string function on it okay so now it should also set the name while adding the action so first let me get rid of all the actions in the list right now and now when we add an action as you can see that we are setting the name automatically okay so with this custom inspector we can add different cutscene actions to our actions list and each actions can have different variables in it okay and also since we are using the latest version of unity we can easily reorder the elements in the list so now we have the base for creating our cutscene builder so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we'll write the implementation of these cutscene actions and we'll use them to create cutscenes all right so i'll stop the video here if you think these videos are helpful please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out so i'll see you in the next video